Thank you. And thank you all for being here. This is a really important topic, I think, um, and something that I think we really need to figure out how to get our arms around. So again, appreciate for you holding the hearing as well as talking about this. Um, I want to start with Ms. Co Ms. Coven. Is, and, and I'm trying to understand blockchain, the role it, it plays, but could blockchain analytics or other um, technological solutions, so to speak, streamline the filing and analysis of SARS and CTRs? And, and, and if the answer is yes, which I hope it is, could you expand on that a little bit? Yes, thank you for the question. Um, blockchain analytics already is enriching SAR and CTR quality. Our customers from private sector are leveraging the insights from our data to, to file their SARS and CTRs today. It paints a very vivid picture of the entire kill chain of events. So if we're talking about scams in particular, yeah. you have a much vivid color of where the funds are going and coming from counterparties as well, much more so than you would in the traditional financial industry. And is the timing a lot quicker as well, I'm assuming? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. The, uh, cryptocurrency is an attractive asset for legitimate uses as well as illicit for its speed. Of I mean, in my opinion, we have all these government or agencies and we have these rules and regulations and at times they're so cumbersome and at times overburdening for the businesses where, where I think the businesses are trying to do the right thing and people are trying to do the right thing. It's just there's, the volume is so, so um, immense right, that it just takes time to go through that. So one of the biggest advantages I see, and I'd like to get your opinion on this, is the time, because to your point, the timing is crucial on when we find these. Could you talk a little bit about the timing of this and, and the time frame, how the time frame is shortened? Yes, so we also provide real-time transaction monitoring, allowing financial institutions uh, to get alerts on funds incoming or off um, going off their platform, and they can be alerted in real time uh, to these funds. So really time is at the essence, and current processes, reporting, information sharing is, is painfully slow. And <laughs> even though cryptocurrency and the blockchain enable tracing and freezing, um, time is really at the essence. We have to make sure that those insights are delivered in a timely fashion. Do you have any measurables on that? No, ma'am. Okay. Not. All right. Just curious. Thank you. Um, Mr. McLaughlin, how can FinCEN improve its communication and feedback mechanisms with banks and blockchain analytics uh, firms following SARS and CTR submissions? Could you talk a little bit about that? Sure. And thank you for your question. Um, as you, everybody could probably tell, the point of a lot of the things I've said today is creating an open and transparent two-way communication between the public and private sector so that we could begin focusing the resources that we have on the threats that our customers face on a daily basis. Um, so working with FinCEN to establish a working group or a task force or uh, whatever terminology you want to yeah. throw at it um, would allow us to begin establishing and doing data analytics on what the government is seeing, what law enforcement is seeing, and what the private sector is seeing so that we can, um, so that we can begin putting pen to paper on what a true risk-based approach means for, for financial crimes across the board, fraud, money laundering, sanctions, and, and terrorism finance. Are you getting any pushback or running into any roadblocks on that? Um, I, I wouldn't say roadblocks or pushback. I think um, with the, the increased scrutiny that all, all of you are bringing to light today, I do think we are seeing across the industry a knowledge sharing exercise taking place, whether that be informally or formally. Um, but um, more work is needed. I think when we look at things like the FFIEC manual and, and the revisions there. I do think a public, private, and law enforcement type engagement would allow us to put, put down what the actual requirements are so that we could, so we could point to uh, the, the crimes that we're trying to capture. And are you getting any pushback on that public-private uh, partnerships? 
personally with the folks that, that, that I work with, no, it's just not official. It's, okay. um, you know, it's at, you know, outside the hallways here or at a convention or a conference that knowledge sharing really exists. Thank you. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. I think the